Okay, good afternoon everybody. Um, I was just looking at my agenda and I saw that that's the only design talk for the day. I see some more coming tomorrow, but I somehow feel honored to be the only designer talking to you today. So I'm going to talk to you about the true purpose of the way design systems should be used and their true purpose. That's my humble personal opinion, of course. So you're not like bound to it by any means, but um, I believe that we've seen just a small part of design system and that's why I just have this kind of a, my own badge there because the way I see them and their kind of a, a lifetime and maturity is that we're just going to be using them more and more uh, in the near future and they're definitely gonna be used in different ways than what we've kind of seen before. So before I jump in the topic, a very quick intro. I'm the senior UX architect at Infragistics Bulgaria. I work for developer and UX tools, which are our own products or suits of products. Uh, you can find me often speaking at different conferences, uh, usually about topics that I feel comfortable in, like design. And uh, I also do some trainings, educations, workshops from time to time. And I see myself as entrepreneur at heart and fan of the uh, movies that are like, uh, what was the, yeah, the whole scope of it, the action hero movies. So we're going to talk about design systems and I decided to start today with a little bit of a kind of bringing everybody together into what design systems are considered to be. And therefore I chose a quote from one of my favorite books about design system, design systems, which is that they represent a set of connected patterns and shared practices which coherently are organized in a way that helps us uh, serve the purposes of the digital product development. And that's the way design systems have been seen for maybe more than a year now, since they started to become more and more popular. So if I may ask a real quick like a show of hands in the audience, who has not heard about design systems before this talk? Like completely unfamiliar, anyone? No one? A few people? Okay. And who has used any design system professionally? So few people never heard of it and few people used it. I think that's, that's quite promising for my talk because my goal is to like share you my vision of design systems as I already said, but how other people see design systems and how very frequently design systems are promoted or advertised. They're, design, they're advertised as systems or workflows that help us improve the consistency of a product. And that's usually one of the biggest kind of a promises that design systems bring to the table. Also, they talk a lot about clarity. There is even a design system that's called clarity. They talk about efficiency of the design process in a team of designers, about improving the beauty, the aesthetic looks of the product about having more uniform style of the whole brand that's more consistently implemented uh, across different products. We talk about, of course, coherence in the same kind of fashion or about saving time because instead of starting from scratch every time with a design system, you can start with some pre-made kind of uh, particles that you combine and create uh, or uh, use together. Brand unity at scale, teamwork, collaboration, and even improving trust because of the improved consistency and the perceived kind of a, a more trustworthy, I believe, systems and designs. However, uh, I believe, and the way we saw design systems when we first started to like explore them, which was maybe a, a year ago or, or a little more than a year ago, was that in our kind of a small world, a world of like, 10 to 15 designers spread across three continents in working in three very, very distant locations and having to communicate over all kind of a conference calls uh, on a regular basis. We saw that actually each of us has his own kind of understanding of how a design process should work, of how a visual design should look. And even though we kind of work under the roof of the same company and supposedly our branding efforts should be aligned. Very often they were very different based on the location, not even the product we were working on. So we saw 
the promise of design system of uh, letting us build more co coherent experiences, more consistent visuals and more robust brands as something that would even fit the needs of our organization. So a design system usually consists of a few things and I have actually shown a few design systems that are out there and I believe are quite popular that implement to some degree uh, those common features. So design systems usually involve a lot of styles which let us brand our look uh, in a very easy way to change the whole brand uh, like mostly those are our branding colors or some kind of logo types or something related to the typography which kind of brings some notion for a certain product that may be different for another product that we implement. So there are often UI symbols or uh, they, they are sometimes, sometimes called UI kits, UI libraries. There are like many ways you can call them, but those are actually the building blocks that designers use in order to construct an interface. And those symbols sometimes do, sometimes don't, as we see also from the image come with some degree of customization, letting us define different interactive states, different uh, kind of uh, variants for covering or maybe for better contrast or for different kind of groups of users. And of course, all of the design systems come with a set of controls, which are done in a way that lets us implement the design which is achieved by the design system and the UI symbols and components in a very easy way as uh, runnable, executable code. Uh, I believe actually all of those systems that we see on the top, I show them only by the logos, but you can see the lightning design system, which is this like, um, yeah, air balloon with the lightning, which was built by Salesforce. It was one of the first ones actually to touch the market. We also see Clarity, which is um, a design system by VMware, our friends in the foyer. Maybe you can talk more about it with them. We've got the Carbon design system, which I believe was by IBM. And we have Indigo Design, which is our own design system. As you can see, all of them, in a way, have this kind of a convergence around these five main building blocks. The, the fifth one, of course, I believe to be the most important one and I also see it as the one that actually started this whole kind of movement about design system, which is the guidance or the user guidance of how to apply those design symbols, controls and styles in a way that kind of speaks the same language. And I say that I believe that was the trigger for the whole design system movement to start because actually all of us have heard about material, which is Google's guideline for implementing a design, a design language or a design system. And the uh, Google material guidelines uh, are actually what kind of started in my personal view, this whole kind of uh, noise and uh, yeah, rumors about how design systems can be used. So we see that actually um, some of the major players, I would say, have implemented design systems in a similar way. And when we started with our own design system, Indigo.design, we took the same approach because we saw that those are like the five cornerstones of having a robust and um, yeah, useful design system. So if we come back to the kind of definition I started with, we see that we have the set of connected patterns on the design uh, side for the designer on one hand through some libraries and to some, through some tooling and also for the developer through the UI controls that they use. And we have also some sort of shared practices through those guidelines and through those kind of uh, user guidance um, pieces of documentation that let us know how to apply, how to use, how to customize those um, elements. However, I believe that there is a second part of this definition which is probably be, which which has probably been neglected um, and we actually decided to focus our product on that second part of this topic because we believe that design is or maybe bef before I say what I believe the design is I can make a very quick like show of hands if somebody wants to share what his opinion of design is, apparently we have space for only a couple of words. So if you can put design in a couple of words, what would you say? It's a tool for, for solving problems. 
tool for solving problems. Okay, anyone else want to try? That's quite close to my belief too. Okay, well, I believe that the, desi the design is actually a process. And since this process actually gives us this tooling to come to the solution, of course, we have to maybe define a little bit further or the way I saw it is that I refined my definition of design further by saying that, that it is a systematic process, of course, uh, in the, not only in the scope of design systems, but in the scope that it's a process that we have to be able to apply over and over and over again to solve different problems, but always come to the right solution or at least to a solution that's viable and a solution that works. So here is a little bit more about that. And the way I see design systems is as a process that allows us to actually experiment, fail, and iterate faster in order to craft a viable and validated digital product that solves a problem, which is actually similar to the uh, suggestion we got from the audience. So in that art or in this kind of, with this interpretation, I would say that most of the design systems haven't really thought deeply and maybe in a focused way how they can be used to serve the purposes of a digital process or how, they, how can they guarantee that a problem is actually being solved. The way I see other design systems, um, the ones I mentioned before, is that they give you tooling, they give you uh, productivity, they, they give you many promises for consistency, for making things look better, work better, save your time, let you be more productive, but they don't really tell you whether you solve a product. And that's part of the story we tied in to Indigo.design because uh, we've been a very firm believer about the true principles and the true story of UX design, which is actually speaking to the user or getting feedback from the user. Um, and if that's something that you've heard a thousand times, I will probably say it a thousand times more because even I don't do it as much as I would like to and I know that many people don't do it. So maybe until we actually start doing it, we're gonna hear it over and over again. Uh, but in order to speak with users and get their feedback, we have to have some prototyping capabilities, some usability studies, some ways and processes and means to get feedback from the users. And of course, uh, the way we saw that story evolving even further was through the generation of code assets, which actually allows us to even take that productivity level one step further. Um, because it's very nice and this story looks somehow very complete the way we are used to working as designers and developers. Having a designer start with a concept, build something out of scratch, using some tooling, doing some customization, applying some styling, passing it on to the developer, helping him understand the concept, working together to build a viable uh, solution with it, which is actually runnable code. But at the end of the day, this process is kind of a, involves a lot of communication, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of redundancy, maybe, in my opinion. And therefore, we actually thought that if we're able to also bridge the gap between design de and development, not simply by exporting some style or by providing a tool that lets uh, the developer take, him, take his kind of uh, styles, looks and feels from the design tool, but actually by providing a way to generate code assets, which led, which led the developer to just plug in the data and he have the runnable MVP or proof of concept that he is probably looking to create. So actually our two kind of uh, additions to this whole process uh, interpretation of design and design systems are those two um, points. And that's how actually Indigo.design got to the state it is today. We have a design system for Sketch, which of course involve or includes a few libraries that allow us to manipulate the styles on a global level or create some local styling for the branding of what we're building. We have our user interface symbols, which could be components, could be more complex evolutions of components like patterns or different forms. And of course, we have the degree of customization that we provide with the UI controls as well, that you see on the far right. 
Um, our, of course, UI controls are Ignite UI for Angular right after me. In the other hall, there will be a presentation about uh, sharing some thoughts about our kind of scope and the way we see devel um, web development as a company evolving to this point and evolving even further. Uh, but, of course, we have added our code assets, and I'm going to demo that in a few minutes to show you how actually from a sketch design you can export, in a way, on a runnable application that runs in Angular. And, of course, the missing link, uh, or the other part of the missing link, is this process kind of notion, which is achieved through prototyping or creating the interactions between the different screens, and running some usability tests, sharing with customers to, to get feedback, or sharing with users to see how well they perform different tasks with our design. So that's what Indigo.design is. And I'm going to jump into the left part first, because I'm just going to very quickly run through the other two at the end as a demo. But I really wanted to talk more about the way we see our um, design system for Sketch, because there is this very popular kind of a book a uh, couple of years ago that was released by Brad Frost. Has anyone, has anyone heard about Atomic Design, the book? A few people? So actually, he split the way design and development is done. He's actually kind of a designer slash developer, in a way. Uh, into different pieces. There is this kind of a chemistry or biology kind of notion in them. So he split um, different pieces of design and development as atoms, which are uh, things like simple components, avatars, buttons, maybe some list item or something like that. He also speaks about molecules, which are kind of a created when different atoms are combined. And an example molecule in our case is the list, which actually consists of templatable list items. And we have also organisms, which are more kind of evolved. And they, they're, they're like self-sustainable pieces of design, if you imagine them, or of interface. Because a profile screen or a profile interface is something that is mature enough to live on its own, but built from different atoms and molecules combined together. Of course, Brad Frost goes on to, to talk about templates and pages, uh, which of course is, a way, is one way that a design system could evolve. But I'm not going to jump into that because even like we are not there yet. We haven't matured enough to have something like that. But imagine something like pre-made running applications for different kind of scenarios or something like that. That's the way I kind of feel it or imagine it. However, there is one thing, and that's why on the left there is a little bit of a gap, because we also added some subatomic pieces, which let us control branding and the visual and aesthetical aspects of our product better. And those are things such as controls, elevations or shadows, typographies, and of course, icons. We, lo we love, uh, we kind of love Android in a way, but we love material, and that's why our design system speaks the material design language. And uh, we have built our subatomic pieces, you can call them electrons, protons, as you wish, are organized into four groups, which lets, very easy, which lets us very easily change the branding of the product or completely revamp it with just like a few a few clicks of the mouse here and there. So I have around 25 minutes and I want to jump in a demo because I believe that through a demo you will be able to see more uh, like or get a more uh, direct experience of how things work. And for the purposes of the demo, uh, let me just quickly, I would need to mirror my screen. Okay, okay, we're on the same screen now. So, first of all, I want to show you the application that I was preparing yesterday, uh, for today. <laughs> Usually demos work that way, you do it in the last minute or two. So, this is a very simple application that shows us some basic information about ISTA. There is a 
puck pun, which is intended. Uh, and there are maybe some speakers for the conference which are like kind of promoting it. And we have some information that I just took from the website. And we have some navigation there. So as you can see, uh, here we have different kind of um, pieces. Some of them, like for example, this navigation bar are components which can be found uh, as part of our libraries. Of course, this is a big library including very different things from data visualization th um, components to all kind of uh, building blocks for forms, including things like, um, for example, inputs of different types, like this one, for example, or even more complex things like something we're particularly proud of, which is the grid which is maybe not the best interface for a mobile experience, but can go really crazy. Um, and yeah, I mean, this uh, is a small disclaimer. What I'm showing here, you can like sign up on the web page, download it. It's a 30 day kind of a free trial. But once you download the libraries, you can use them as long as you wish. They're open source. So uh, the trial is just for the cloud, cloud services. So feel free to like uh, go to cloud.indigo.design and create an account, free account, and download the libraries and play with them. So you're going to actually see all these things that you see here as components, but you're also going to find a few patterns which um, are more al al along the lines of the patterns that I showed according to the uh, Brad Frost interpretation of uh, building blocks. And of course, we have some styling elements. Right now, we, we see only the colors here. Um, but actually, that's the kind of a foundation that lets us do really, uh, really nicely branding and handle it in a very smooth and professional way. So to show you how those things look below the hood, um, I actually want to open up the styling library. Okay, there it is. So once you're in the styling library or our kind of a first subatomic library, you can see some reusable icons or you can see that with just a few clicks you can for example, select this whole palette of primary colors and change the, the base color to purple or to green or to something that's applied and creates in a very similar fashion to our actually Angular product, a whole palette of darker and brighter shades, which of course are then transferred throughout your components and all the designs you have been creating. Same goes for secondary colors and some other special colors. But it's also uh, very kind of a nicely implemented for typographies, which just by dragging and selecting all the elements, you could say that rather than this Titilium web font, you would like to use something that's more um, representative of your brand, like for example, Avenir, and everything kind of gets transformed. And from now on, this kind of font family will be used across the board for your designs. So. This is basically the way I see branding and design at scale because you can just create the style and from then on apply it to all the products of your, uh, of your, of your scope. Um, so I am going to save this file actually so that we're able to see how it affects the other files and I'm going to open the components next which is the atoms of our design system. And actually not only the atoms, but some of the molecules as well. So those changes that I made, <laughs> should appear here. Mm 
<laughs> okay, they should be propagating, but yeah, maybe I'm doing something wrong night right now. The risk of live demos. So um, actually, they should propagate in a way that would even end up eventually here as well, uh, because this design, similar to the one from the demo, he has been designed with the default theming uh, and the default kind of a look and feel. And those changes propagate from throughout the whole the whole kind of a link of libraries to end up in the actual product that we are building together. Okay, I'm not gonna debug it right now. Uh, so what I wanted to show you actually is the way that such an application could be revamped just by changing the color here to something that's more bluish, the other which is more secondary color to something like that and one more thing, uh, that's why it doesn't propagate, okay. Now I will show you how it actually works. There, there was one more step that I was missing out and that was the step to update the layer styles because in the beginning of the summer, Sketch introduced this concept about shared library styles, which actually broke our whole library and took us a couple of months to fix. Uh, but now that everything works nicely together, once you update the styles as well and open up the components, you will see the library update available message here. And once you kind of force that update on your components, the one that actually use the primary color like this batch will be updated out magically. Once you save those propagated changes in the components as well, they will end up in, uh, in here too. Yes. Library update available, update components, voila. So actually that lets you change your brand or create a brand very easily just by using one kind of a styling library and from then on optimize, for example, that this color doesn't contrast well with the background or do some other kind of changes, which you do only once. And from then on, you, every project you create is using the same brand. If you decide to like rebrand your suit, then you go to the libraries and everything will be pushed to all the designs you're creating. Um, and these two actually, once I update their layer styles, here I'm working with some local uh, additional colors which are used on top of our infrastructure um, in the Indigo styling library. That also is possible, so you can make some or push similar changes as well. So I'm going to go back to my original state because what I actually wanted to show you and share with you was one very nice thing uh, which we also were able to build in the past month or so, which is a plugin inside of Sketch letting us to seamlessly publish this to the cloud without interrupting our workflow, without leaving Sketch to a place where it is supposed to live so, for example, I'm going to call it ISTA18. I'm going to click on publish here. And after a couple of seconds, this sketch file we will put in the cloud, letting me define my interactions, letting me do things like, for example, ah, there it is actually. Go full screen. Okay, that's the one I pushed right now. So from here, I'm able to edit the prototype, create usability study for it, define certain steps that I want to use the users to go through, give them a task and see whether they kind of connect the dots. If they don't, apparently I have to go back in Sketch and do my work there. So with this prototype, what I'm going to do next is actually show you, that was a little bit of a spoiler, how using that link, I can generate a prototype in Visual Studio Code. Uh, 
I guess most of the audience consists of developers. Am I correct? Half of the audience, okay. So what I do here is that I have used the Angular CLI to create an empty pro uh, project and I'm just going to run our plugin for Visual Studio Code. I can paste the link here or I, since I, I was kind of trying my demo earlier, I can use the same link again. W this is the link from the cloud actually that the plugin provided me with. And what we see here is that for the one screen we have designed in Sketch, there are different things we can select. I'm going to select this bottom part because usually navigation is something that we don't want to code gen. It's something that's like the Chrome for the whole app and we implement uh, differently. But maybe this screen is something that we want to just like get the HTML and the TypeScript and everything and just like uh, bind the data and hit, or hit go. So we're going to see here a few messages as this uh, kind of a code generation service is running. First one is asking us to add the packages that are not there. Those are packages for the different components that are used. And next it's going to ask us to override some of the files that were created by the default in the default application by, by the Angular CLI. You could also use the Ignite UI CLI, of course. Um, so my connection is working. We should get the message in a second. Yes to all, and we're done. So basically, with these few steps, we can go here into app and see that actually all the HTML has been generated for the design we did, together with the TypeScript, together with the styling file. And if we actually take this selector and put it there, because what we're going to see now, um, I'm not going to put it yet because we'll see the default kind of a Angular CLI um, application. But once we use that kind of a selector, it's going to render our application instead. Okay, we see the Welcome to Estate in Life, which is the name of our Angu uh, Angular project. I don't need this anymore. I wanted to click on this one and select all of this HTML, paste the selector, close the brackets, hit save, and we have runnable code. Uh, why is that so important? Because if it took me a couple of hours maybe to create the design and generate the code, that's something that could mean a couple of hours for your next MVP or PLC. And that's what I believe is the true value and the true purpose of design systems. Because they let us actually improve our productivity and come to, uh -huh. is it so? Okay. They actually let us be more productive. They let us have better death death processes. And as we saw from the demo, rather than making small tweaks every now and then, we can do changes that affect our work in a much more profound ways, as also Ala Kolmatova uh, kind of quote goes. So actually, I combined both demos into one. And with that, I would like to thank you for the attention, leaving the final 10 minutes for Q&A. Uh, those are the two books I actually mentioned, The Atomic Design by Brad Frost and Design Systems by Ala Kolmatova. So I believe that those are two uh, really precious resources when it comes to understanding what design systems are and how they can affect your design and development processes. Um, and I believe that this is the future of design and development. So besides the 10 minutes now, tomorrow I'll be available for a couple of hours in the morning in Panorama Hall. Uh, and if we don't get the chance to like talk to each other while we're here at ISTA, you can ping me on any of those social channels. So with that, I would like to open up, it, open up the discussion for Q&A.
It's a small hall, so maybe we don't need a mic. So just raise your hand or stand up and ask your question. Behaviors. Yes, do you have behaviors? Mm -hmm. So we have behaviors inside of the components that are generated as Angular code. So once you code gen your design, you have all the behaviors that actually the component supports and that are provided by default. You can like further tweak them and customize them. Uh, Sketch as a tool is not a behavioral tool in a way. So what we did in order to kind of a uh, give a notion of behaviors in Sketch was to actually provide uh, different states for, um, for the various components. So for example, you have idle error and success states for an input, and you have other similar states, which kind of give this notion. So I wouldn't say that they're like as uh, the way that we would expect them to be in the product and dynamic in the way that they are in the product, but you can like also carry that notion and even like use the, the cloud to implement something more interactive. Thank you. Other questions? Well, if there are no more, more questions, maybe we can have a longer break for some coffee. So thank you once again, and feel free to reach out. <laughs>